It's easy. You know, we live in a world where we constantly push away the reminders of death. So we decorate the, you know, the, the, the funeral sites. We decorate the graves. We add flowers. We build these beautiful coffins. We uh, all add all of these subhanAllah extra layers between us and the grave sites. So we push the grave sites far away from the urban centers, far away from big cities. We hide them, tuck them away because we don't want that constant reminder, at least in the modern world, in the contemporary world. Whereas the Muslims of the past would actually be very much against this. And Nabi Wasallam, when he built the Masjid in Nabawi, right before, just a few, you know, you walk in steps away from the Masjid in Nabawi. What's the Masjid? That's your city center. That's the place where decision making is taking place regarding commerce and trade, business, regarding, you know, policies, regarding uh, contracts, obligations, all of those. The court system, that's all taking place in and around the Masjid. And a few walking steps away from the masjid is the most beautiful of graveyards, Jannatul Baqiyah. And it's not even called the graveyard. What is it called? It's called the heaven of Baqiyah. Because for those who are buried there, those who sacrificed their lives, those who left beautiful legacies behind, as we know, that gravesite becomes a portion of Jannah. A small taste of what is to come. And so the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ encouraged the companions to talk about death, to remember death, to remember the day they stand in front of Allah, but not to remember it in a way that induces fear, in a way that induces, you know, anxiety and stress and worry, but rather in a way that highlights justice. Highlights justice. Even the name for the Akhirah, it's literally the final the next, the last, meaning every one of us gets a word in this dunya, gets a share in this dunya, but the final word is the word of Allah. There are judgments in this dunya, but the absolute judgment is the judgment of Allah. The last judgment, the last word, the last decision, the ultimate word, the ultimate decision is the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day that we stand in front of Him. And there are many beautiful ayat in the Quran that yes, induce sadness, but that sadness should be a productive sadness. Yes, it induces a bit of anxiety, but that anxiety should not be crippling, but should be productive anxiety that leads us to actually overcoming, reflecting, thinking, recalibrating, reorienting, reconsidering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us at the end of Surah Al-Hashr, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ And then in those same ayat, he reminds us, يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Meaning he built in the Qur'an, and this is found throughout the Qur'an, establishes a clear connection between remembering who we are, what we are, and remembering Allah, and remembering the day that we stand in front of Him. Meaning, when you don't remember, when you don't think about the day that you stand in front of Him, you begin to lose a sight of who you are, what you are, where you're going, and you begin to lose a sight of your connection with Allah, and the three are interchangeable. One of the most beautiful verses in the Quran, shaking, they shake the hearts of the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ Beautiful verses that again highlight the justice of Allah. You know the verses about the hereafter. They're not all in one surah. They're scattered throughout. So that you're constantly reminded in little doses. You're not overwhelmed. The whole stage is not set. The backdrop is not set. There are little episodes almost given to you in the form of small pills that you can swallow. And sandwiched around that are ayat of hope. Ayat of mercy. 
So Allah is making that day accessible. Allah is making that day real in your mind, but He's also making it a day that highlights mercy and gives hope. Yes, it induces fear for those who need to be reminded. And there are those people. But in the same light and in the same lens, it gives hope. So what does Allah mention in Surah Al-Zalzala? Surah Al-Zilzal. Allah says, when the earth finally shakes its ultimate shaking, a shaking that's never been witnessed before, a shaking that forces everything that this earth has been holding in, forces it all out. So imagine, this is so beautiful and metaphorical as well. Literally, the earth throws up. You know, imagine someone is sick. They've been holding something in and it's making them sick and they can't wait to throw it out. The earth has been holding all of this weight, gold and treasures that people fought for, killed each other for, brothers ruined each other's relationships for, bodies that were buried, stories that were hidden, lies that were buried, bodies of tyrants and rulers that the earth didn't even want to take, but had no choice but to take, because that's the qadr, the decree of Allah, and has been waiting for this moment to finally tell its own story. All these injustices, all of these treasures, all of these things that seem to be so significant in our eyes, but so insignificant, the earth finally throws all that out. And it throws out the people who are buried, humans are resurrected. And people look around and say, Subhan, what's going on here? This is not the earth that we remember. Because Allah mentions, والسماوات, On that day, the final day, the day of resurrection. Rules are changed. The constants are no longer constants. It's not the same, you know, constants that we are operating by now. Gravity is not the same. East and West are not the same. The earth may not even be in the same place. Allah mentions all of that will be changed. Your earth will not be the same earth. Your heavens will not be the same heavens. The sun will be much, much closer at least in, in certain moments of that day. It'll feel like it's in, near, like near you. You can't even breathe from the heat for some. But the shade comes to cover others. And the mercy of Allah comes to cover others. So on that day, the human being panics. Like, this is not the earth that I remember. What is this? What is this light? What is this noise? What's going on? Like maybe some of us will be floating. Some of us will be traveling. Very. All of these things have changed. And so they look at each other. Malaha, what happened to this earth? I don't remember being this way. And on that day, the earth itself will tell its story. Will tell its news will tell the history of humanity from an unbiased source. The history of nations and civilizations will be retold by the most honest witness of all witnesses, the earth. You know how amazing that is? Allah is reminding every person that has survived injustice, that has been buried and bullied and hurt, and no one was there to notice no one was there to act. No one was there to stand or empower. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that the earth, amongst many other things and beings and entities, will get to tell its story. The body is a gift from Allah. And the body was misused by some of us. Some of us forced our legs. We were in charge. We had agency. So we used our legs and arms and eyes and ears to do some terrible things. On that day, Allah reverses agency. Allah gives your mouth agency to speak. Your tongue testifies either for you or against you. Your legs testify either for you or against you. Your eyes will tell everything that was seen or ignored or you're turned a blind eye to. The story is told. Agency is given to the body. And not only that, in the Quran, Allah reminds us that even those that were silenced in the dunya and those that had the mouthpiece
to tell false news in the dunya, those will be changed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ It's such a beautiful, beautiful image. Allah says that the little girl that was buried unjustly, as was the custom of some Arab societies, that little girl who was buried alive because of shame and stigma or financial limitations and otherwise, and even some religious astaghfirullah justification that was completely bogus, that little girl that was buried alive will be asked, what happened to you? Whereas the person that did this act is not even mentioned. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not acknowledge the person who committed such injustice because they failed to acknowledge their own fitrah. So the narrative gets to be told by the person who suffered that injustice. And Allah mentions, echoes the same meaning. In Surah Al-Qasas, Allah mentions that the people who committed such criminal actions and atrocities to a point where it's, there is no there is no, there is no justice in even giving them an opportunity to speak. Allah takes the agency away from them. The earth cannot tolerate hearing that person. The heavens, the mountains cannot tolerate. You have nothing to say. Don't even speak. You had lots of chances, opportunities. You told so many narratives. You played with so many words. You knew very well what kind of person you saw yourself mutating, your fitrah transforming, your humanity changing, and you ignored it and ignored it and ignored it, and Allah sent you wake up call after wake up call, sign after sign. You ignored, you silenced all of that in your life. So today you're silent. And the voice of the weak is given the chance to be heard. That's how Allah describes the day of resurrection. That's how Allah describes Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So it's not a reason to be fearful. It's a reason to be hopeful and to hold yourself accountable. And then Allah mentions in that same surah, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ that whoever works and does an atom's weight, a mustard seed's weight of good shall see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil or wrong shall see it. وُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ فَتَرَى الْمُجِرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And the book is published. The book of records, the book of deeds that was written by the angels. The story that was told by the earth. The story that was told by the mountains who witnessed and the heavens that witnessed. The real story is cast out, publicized for humanity to see individual records, national records, meaning nations and their records, what they've done, what the Muslims have done, what other communities have done. All of that is publicized in a way that can be accessed and read by all of humanity instantly. That's the power of that day. And then finally, as this is happening, those who committed injustice and acts of crim criminal acts, what will they say? Crimes against Allah, what will they say? Ya waylatana. Oh man, what a shame. What a horrible moment to be in. Mali hadha al-kitab. Why is it that this book leaves nothing small? La yughadiru does not ignore, does not dismiss the smallest or the largest of things. Wa wajadu ma amilu hadira. And they found everything that they've done present right in front of them. They could, they could see it, they could touch it, they could relive it. So these are not just words on a book. These are Pictures, actions captured and recaptured and broadcasted to be viewed and reviewed. And amongst all of this, Allah gives the believer hope. 
the person who's given their book of records with the right hand, what will they say? Ha umukra'u kitabiyah, look, read my book. Inni dhanantu anni mulaqin hisabiyah. I've been waiting for this moment. There are things that I didn't publicize, nobody knew about, but Allah knew about. And today it all gets broadcasted. Then Allah describes that person. The best kind of life, the best kind of honor given to that person. And then when Aisha radiallahu anha, and we'll finish with this, was hearing all of these ayat, she asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, are all of us going to have our deeds publicized? And Nabi Sallam smiled and he told her, Almost everyone, except the people who did good or started off with not so good and repented and repented and re-evaluated their lives and left beautiful legacies behind, what Allah will do is Allah will give them what is called ard, without account. Meaning that Allah will call some of us. And we'll show our actions and our deeds so that you know that Allah knew. You know that the story was witnessed. But Allah will keep it private because you had a struggle that you kept private. And you worked hard to overcome. And in the end, you managed to overcome it for the sake of Allah. And striving against your own desires and limitations to mute it and to become better in the sight of Allah. Look at the mercy of Allah. That Allah affirms but encourages. That Allah holds accountable but protects your privacy and your struggles. But those who didn't care, and they publicized it, and they had this notion of, I don't care, this is my life, this is who I am. I'm not going to struggle. This is who I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embrace it. Those are the ones that get publicized in front of Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be held to, to allow us to hold each other accountable before we're held accountable, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to weigh our deeds before they're weighed for us, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reflect on the day that we meet Him and to allow that day to be a source of motivation, encouragement, and justice for all of us, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Ameen. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum sayyil muslimin wa astaghfirunna wa ghafur rahim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على من اصطفى اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في معطيت اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عباد الله إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وانه عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتا Please step up if you can to accommodate. If you have space, please step up if you can to accommodate those who are at the back. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salati, hayya ala al-falah. قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استمعوا استقيموا تراص واعتدلوا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا والين أمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها 
يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله just a very quick request إن شاء الله if you are able to stay back and you don't have to rush out please give a chance for those who are rushing back to work. So give them a chance to leave first so that we're able to get into their cars and we reduce the traffic on the way out. Uh, and this is again a part of us being courteous as Muslims. So if you can stay back a few minutes, do adhkar, do istighfar. Uh, Asr is coming in, inshallah, yani, uh, you know, soon. So you can stay back for Asr as well. Enjoy some time in the masjid, have a conversation or two. And then inshallah, that will give a chance for those who have to rush uh, an opportunity to leave earlier. Uh, second thing, inshallah, is as Ramadan is coming, alhamdulillah, it's approaching. May Allah give us life to witness Ramadan. Uh, we are, inshallah, uh, going to be uh, adding a cushion, adding a new carpet, inshallah, in the masjid. Uh, and that carpet, inshallah, we hope uh, will be uh, a good, uh, comfortable carpet that will make it easier, inshallah, to pray, especially for the seniors who have given us feedback that they've been struggling with their knees, and even some of the young guys who don't work out. Yani, may Allah make it easy for you who've complained also about the knees. So we're going to be changing that, inshallah. Uh, we're hoping that uh, we know the community to be very generous, alhamdulillah, when it comes to investing in the masjid. So on your way out, we are, inshallah, collecting for that. If you want to be a part of the 
uh, inshallah, the legacy and contribute to that, you can do so outside. We encourage all of you, inshallah, to continue to give as you've been continuously giving. May Allah bless you, Ya Rabbi. Ameen. Very quickly, some uh, reminders, inshallah, and announcements. In honor of Black History Month, Isna Canada is hosting Sister Rashida uh, Ali, the daughter of Muhammad Ali, and Ustad Ubaidullah Evans at the Isabel Bader Theater on February 18th for an event to reflect on the legacy of Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali as Muslim heroes of you know the recent uh, times. The tickets are available at isnacanada.com slash Malcolm dash Ali. Isna Canada is hosting a two days sisters retreat with the Qalam scholars Ustada Atifa and Ustada Fatima to learn more about the women of the Quran. For more information and to purchase inshallah tickets, you can visit uh, isnacanada.com slash sisters retreat and that will be on February 18th and 19th. Join us tonight inshallah for a special edition of Friday Night Live, the weekly program that we have. For tonight, it will be with the special respected guest, Mufti Abdul Wahab Wahid, and our local Sheikh, Sheikh Shuaib Wardak. May Allah bless them both. And it will be a lecture based on the Prophet Muhammad Sallam's household, the prophetic household. And it will be beginning tonight after Isha Salah. You're welcome to bring your family and friends. And it is an open program at no charge. This Saturday, Isna Canada and Miftah Institute are partnering to provide uh, an evening of the analysis of uh, Surat Yusuf and the journey of Yusuf alayhi salam from 6 to 9 p.m. once again with Mufti Abdul Wahab Wahid. You can register at miftah.org slash Yusuf. For those who come to Quran Journey, we've been doing Surat Yusuf and this will be a good recap of the Surah inshallah and good lessons to take. So we move on to Surat uh, Al-Kahf next week. This will be a good inshallah closure. This Sunday evening, we're launching the first iteration of our monthly New Muslim Social. Alhamdulillah, last year we had around 100 and, uh, 150 new Muslims, people come to the community. So we do need to give them support. This will be the beginning, the first step, inshallah, in providing that constant support and uh, guidance for our newcomers, our new sisters and brothers to the community. Converts, old and new, are invited to ask questions and connect with others. And our facilitator, brother Ryan, Hilliard, inshallah, from 6 p.m. to 7.30 in the Education Center. You can register isnacanada.com slash convert social. Uh, Isna Canada is also happy and excited to be announcing accessible Quran classes for those children with disabilities, whether visible or non-visible. Classes are weekly starting this Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Registration is open for grades 1 to 8, isnacanada.com slash accessible Quran. And once again, you can support the masjid on the way out. Biryani is being sold for $10. May Allah bless all of you. Ameen, ameen, ameen. There are a few dua requests. Please keep our brothers and sisters who are uh, struggling with uh, sickness, struggling with illness. May Allah give them full shifa, ya Rabbi, ameen. And those who recently passed away, may Allah give them rahmah, mercy, give them jannah, and give their families ease, patience, and resilience. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.